trust him. We're continuing our share in Dishu Balacha. We're holding on. Reish Yud Tes Amid Beis. We're in Shin Samach Gimel. We're almost at the end of Sif Beis. We're at the top of Reish Yud Tes Amid Beis. So until this point, the Mechaber had been discussing the halacha of an area that's surrounded by Gimel Mechitzais. Specifically, we had been discussing so far a Chatzar, not a Movi. We're talking about a chutzer that's surrounded on three sides by mechitzos. The fourth side had fallen down and had become either completely breached, or maybe there was something left, but it was still parutz merubah la'imid. And we're talking about where the opening is ten amos or less. So we said, even though normally an opening of ten ama or less can be viewed as a pesach, and therefore the mechitza is not bottle because we look at it as a mechitza with a Pesach. However, over here, where it's nifratz b'miluoi, where it became completely breached, or at least it's parts merubah la'imid, so that the oimid is bottle, we can no longer look at it as a Pesach. So now we have a breached wall. Since we have a breached wall, we no longer have a mokka mukaf tal mechitzais. So therefore the chachamim asr tiltal, they said you can't carry more than dalad amas in this area, unless you make a tikkun kol shehu. And the tikkun that we spoke about so far, we spoke about two different potential tikkunim. One was a pas dalad. You have a standing section, some kind of board, that's dalad tfachim and, and ten tfachim high. So that would be a pas on one side of the opening. That would be masak in the opening. Or you could have a lechi of a kol shehu, a mashahu, tiny little lechi that's ten tfachim high, one on each side of the opening. And that would also be effective to consider the fourth side closed off and to allow tiltal. Now the Mechaber continues on the top of Reishu Tesam and Beis, and the Mechaber says, So far we had been talking about where the opening is 10 ama or less wide. How about if the breach is, te- is more than 10 amas wide? Then says the Mechaber, Afilo eno bimiluai, even if it's not completely breached, now we're going to have to make a tzuras ha-pesach. Now it's not going to be enough to make any kind of pastalid or just alechi. Now you're going to need a complete tzuras ha-pesach in this opening. Says the Mishnah Bura, nice cut in Yud Beis. The Mechaber chose his words very interestingly. The Mechaber said, Im yesh papirza amos, so the opening is more than 10 amas wide, even if it's not completely breached, right? Even if there's some standing wall, still, since you have an opening of more than 10 amas wide, you have to make it surah sapesach. Says the Mishnah Brewer, in ice cut in your base, hmm? the form. Surah sapesach is the form of a doorway. And that's what two lechis and something on top does. It gives you two doorposts at a mashkaif. So that's the form of a door of a doorway. Says the Bish Tabur, a nice cut in your base. Afilo eno bimilua. That was what the Machaber said. Even if it's not completely breached. Says the Chavitz Chaim, Hailishna Lavdafka. This is this wording is not very precise. The Afilo Haimin Maruba Allah Parutz Kamke Nasir. Because what is the what's the Kiddish that the Machaber is saying here? The Mechaber is saying, if the opening is 10 amas wide, so even if the breach, even if it's not completely breached, says the Chavetz Chaim, there's a much bigger Chiddush. The bigger Chiddush is, it doesn't matter how much you have closed. <laughs> even if you have so much of the fourth side closed, that you have more closed than you have opened, it's Ayman Merub al Aparetz, Still, the fourth side is going to make the whole chutzar usher and tiltal because it's got an opening that's more than 10 amas wide. And an opening that's more than 10 amas wide can't be a pesach, so it nullifies the entire fourth side. So, why are you telling me uh, since it's nifratz bimilui? It doesn't have to be nifratz bimilui. It could even be oymen merubal aparats. The point is that you have an opening that's 10 amas wide. An opening 10 amas, since it's not a Pesach, it's Mavatl that whole side. The Ke'ilu Nifrat's Kalakaisal dummy. 
because it's the Chavetz Chaim, once you have an opening that's more than 10 amas wide, it's as if that whole side is gone. And as far as the Tzuras HaPesach that you're going to make, the Tzuras HaPesach is going to work even if it is Nifratz B'milua. You could have the opening completely breached from one end to the other. If you put a lechi on one side, a lechi on the other side, and a string across the top, so you have a tzuris of Pesach on the whole thing, a tzuris of Pesach is a complete mechitza. That's a mechitza a gomor. So he says to Chavetz Chaim, he says, the wording of the mechaber was over here just not very precise. So, again, just in, in summation, what the rule that we take away from this last piece of Sif Beis, if you have a mechitza, even if it's only Merubah al but you have a breach in that wall that's more than 10 amas wide, that breach nullifies the entire wall. And the only way to be Mesach in it is with the Tzuras HaPesach. Says the Mechaber in Siv Gimel. Now we turn our attention to the other type of area that's surrounded by three Mechitzais that we mentioned at the beginning of the Simen. Movoy, you have the alleyway. That, and from the alleyway you have openings going to Chatzerim. But now this mavli sheyesh loy shalosh bechitzais, a mavli that has three closed sides. It might have doorways in it that go to chatzerim, but those are small openings. They're less than ten amos, so those are psachim that open onto chatzerim. But now the fourth side, uparutz mitzad revi, it's open on the fourth side, either to a karmelis or to a rishus harabim. It seems that most often mavuya is opened onto rishus harabim. He tiru belechi. Over there, Chazal Wamater Tiltel inside the Mavui, like this, you're not allowed to carry more than Dalai Lamas in that alleyway. Because again, it's got a fourth side open either to a Carmelist or to a Shasarabim. However, the Chazal said you could be Mater a Mavui, you don't need for, to be Mater a Mavui as much as you need for a Chatzar. For a Chatzar, you need either a Pastalid or a Lechi on each side. Not so for a Mavui. Hitiru Belechi, one Lechi on one side is mater tiltal inside the mavi. What's a lechi? Pirush, the Ramah says, targum hakeresh ha'echad. People ask me sometimes, why is it so important to be mavis sedra? Well, what is it, targum? I mean, I, I read the targum, okay? I'll put in a plug for Art Scroll. Now Art Scroll is doing the targum. So uh, now you could, you could uh, already start to delve a little bit more deeply into the targum. But like this, people say, I read the targum, it's all Greek to me, it's all gibberish. Uh, there's an art scroll targum now. Well, it has it has chumish. I don't know all the mafarshim. I don't remember. I think it has Rashi, but it's it's and targum, and it goes through the targum pasuk by pasuk. So there's an art scroll targum if you have a hankering for it. So the 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 value of targum. Take a look at what the Ramah says here. Pirush targum hakeresh haechad. We just finished going through the parshas of the Mishkan. And we spoke about the Krushim. Hakeresh Echad, Lucha Chada. One board, one beam. So that's where the term Lechi comes from. So he tiru Lechi. Chazal said you can be metaltal in the Mavui as long as you put up one Lechi on one side of the opening. Sha'avyoi Verach by Kolshu. The thickness and the width of this Lechi could be a Kolshu. It could be tiny. Sha'yabidenu be Pesach HaMavui. You place it in the opening of the Mavi on one side. The Yi Yagavai Asaratvachim. And it has to be ten Tvachim tall. Says the Mishtaburah is cut in your gimel. He tiru balechi. Chazal amatir tiltal with alechi. Now, I'm going to read this Mishtaburah. And this Mishtaburah is still very fascinating to me. The Svara of the Chavetz Chaim over here seems to be very counterintuitive. But let's see what he says. He tiru balechi. Although in Sif Beis we said that in order to be matter tiltal in a chotzer, over there you need either a pastalid, so either you need a very significant board of dalit tvachim on one side, or a lechi on each side. By a mavoi, the chazal were much more mekel. And they said that you could be matter tiltal in the mavoi with one lechi of a kolshehu on one side. So, uh, so why the discrepancy between a mavi and a chotzer? So you want to say right away that it should be the opposite. Right. And I have a, I have a funny feeling 
that after you read the logic of the Chavetz Chaim, you're still going to think that it should be the other way. But let's see what the Chavetz Chaim says. V'atam, the reason for this discrepancy is, Shekal shehu asu yoyser ledira ulu tashmishay hatsneah, any area that where you do more dira type of activities and you do more things that require privacy, tzarech mechitzais yoyser gemurais, needs more viable mechitzais. Ulefikach, therefore, hachatzerais achatzer shedarkun shel balibatim. The chotzer, which is used much more as a Rishos HaYochid, like we've said many times, they used the chatzerim for the Tashmish Abayas. They ate sometimes in the chotzer. They certainly cooked in the chotzer. They cleaned their clothing in the chotzer. So the chotzer was much more made ledira. So tzrichais v'chitzai seyan liyais yoyser gemurais they need better mechitzais sheyi yashem rishos hayachid alein, so that they should be called a rishos hayachid mei hamavuos. In contrast to a mavui, shein mishtab shemem et hashmisha etznea. A mavui is an alleyway that usually serves multiple chatzerim, so the mavui is more of a public thoroughfare. You don't use a mavui for things that require any level of privacy. Ulafikach therefore daim a mavui balechi. Therefore, you want to be masakin a mavui. All a mavui needs is a lechi. <laughs> I, I would have thought, I, it would have struck me that a mavui, the whole reason why the Chachamim asserted tiltal in the mavui and in the chatzar, we said two reasons. One is either because it's missing a fourth side, it's more daimel rishos harabim, right? That was one reason. The other reason we said was since the mavui is next to the rishos harabim, you might come to carry from the mavui to the rishos harabim. So I would have thought that logically, the Mavui is more of a Rishos Arabim. The Mavui is more similar to Rishos Arabim. So the Chazal would make you do more to be Misakin it. Where the Chatzar is more diamond to the Rishos Hayachid, so you should have to do less. The Chavetz Chaim is telling me quite the opposite. The Chavetz Chaim is saying, no, the Chatzar is more inherently Rishos Hayachid. Since it's more inherently Rishos Hayachid, so you don't need so much of a Tikkun. By its very nature, it's more Rishos HaYachid. We still made a Takana that we're afraid you might make a mistake, but, but, but the, 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 the Chatzar, it's more inherently Rishos HaYachid. No, so still, you have to be Mishakid and more. That's what the Chavetz Chaim is saying. The Chatzar needs, needs more of a Tikkun. So why does the Chatzar need more of a Tikkun? The only logic is a Chatzar needs, needs more of a Tikkun because... You, you're calling a chatzar a rishos hayachid by virtue of what you do in it. And you do things that require privacy. Well, if that's why it's a rishos hayachid, then if one wall is absent, maybe you're not going to use it that way anymore. I think that's the, the, the fear. In other words, uh, it's easier for a chatzar to lose its status. A chatzar, you're used to going and eating meals in the chatzar. Now that it's missing one mechitza, you're going to come out to the chutzner and you're going to say, I'm "Not going to eat here. It's, it's, it's wide open." So you want to be misakin it, and you want to still consider it a rishon sayachid. You have to make it private. So all right. So then you need a pastal or you need a lechi on each side, which is not really going to make it private. But you need more of a tikkun. You need more of a bechitza to retain its status of a chutzner. Whereas a mavoi, a mavoi is more of a rishon sarabim type area. So if one side became breached and you want to be misakin it so that it should be considered to have a fourth side, it takes less to let it, to allow the mavoi to retain its status as mavoi. All you need is a simple lechi to allow it to retain its status because its status is not harmed so much by the loss of the fourth wall. I think that's the logic that the Chavetz Chaim is saying. He's not speaking it out. I'm putting words in his mouth. But that's the only logic that I can read between the lines and I could hear. Right. Right. Because you're using it more. 
Yes. Right, but, that, but that has nothing to do with the fact that you're using it more letashmishe dira and letashmishe hatsneya. That's what the Chavetz Chaim is focusing on. What he's focusing on is that you use it for tashmishe dira and tashmishe hatsneya. Right. So, so that's a lot of things. You got the Shul Sayachid has that for Mechitzas. It has to be a Shul Sayachid. So you want to do that. You got to put the real Mechitzas to make it a Shul Sayachid. Over here, you don't want to make it into a Shul Sayachid. All you want to do is prevent it from being a, a full Shul Sayachid. So if you make obstacles or whatever it is, or you make it look like that and so on, then that's enough. That's what you want to do. Right. So, so I, I, I hear. It from being a, but I think, I think we're saying a similar thing. Yes. You're, you're approaching from one end, I'm approaching from the other. So right? Saying. Right, that the movie, it takes less to make the movie what you need but it to be. It right, you're not making it private. You're not striving to make it private. Make it yeah. Okay. Um, so, mm-hmm. Everything that the Mechaber is saying over here about being Mesach in a Mavui is only when the opening of the Mavui is not more than 10. And we're going to see in Sif Chavav more details that pertain to Mavuyos. Now, this lechi that you're going to use to be matir, this mavui, what does it have to be? He's cutting your dalit kolshu. It has to be the most minute type of lechi. Afilu pachas mayatspa. It can be even less than an etzpa. Mamasha, a, a flimsy little lechi. And you place it per pesach ha mavui, he's cutting tezvav. Ayla kaman sif lamad aleph, where the machaber is going to discuss various questions pertaining to the placement of the lechi. Asar it has to be ten tvachim high. Meruva'a, uh, did we do that yet? Um, yes. yes, we did. Um, Asar Tvachim, Meruvachim, Veloim and Tzamim. The Tvachim that we're talking about over here, with the, we always speak about two different sizes of Tvachim. There are tight Tvachim and looser Tvachim. Over here, these ten Tvachim in height, you need Meruvachim. You need measured with wider Tvachim, which is a, an etzpa, larger. Veloim and Tzamim, Chidusha Rebbe Kiveger. Even if the opening of the Mavu is 20 amas tall, still a lechi of 10 tvachim will be effective. Says the Mechaber Vaiter. It's on the fourth line near the end. You can make this lechi out of anything. Whatever you make it out of, it is effective. You can even make it out of animals. With the following caveat, you have to tie the animal with ropes to the wall of the mavoi, fastening it to pegs that come out of the wall, in such a way that you're supporting the animal's height so that the animal cannot crouch down. Because we're afraid if the animal is going to crouch down, you're going to lose the height of ten tvachim. So you should not lose the height of ten tefachim. Says the Ramah something interesting. Even if you tie a person at the opening of this mavoi, nami heavy lechi. The person can also serve as a lechi. He brings this from the Arzarua. Oh, we get a, a very good question, and we're going to see that there's actually a very interesting nafkamina between those two halachas. Let's see the Mishnabura. Uh, so, so yeah, it's interesting that the Mishnabura doesn't speak about it here, because when the Mishnabura spoke earlier about making mechitzos with palachayim, he brought down a man the Omar that you have to make the animal crouch down, because otherwise you're going to have three tfachim from the ground to the underside of the animal, and that's going to be more than the sheer lovud, so you're going to have an opening shagadim and bay. I would imagine that the same halacha applies over here, but over here he's saying, what? No, but you need, but you need a height, but you need, oh, you mean the legs. 
no, no, you have a very valid point. You have a very valid point. Over, why? No, over, over here. No, you're right. You're right. Over here, the, just the legs of the animal alone would be enough. Because all you need is, because you, the leg will be the bottom of the lechi, and then the torso of the animal going up will be the continuation of the lechi, but you don't care about the open space between the belly and the floor, because all you need is the width of a kal shoe. So you're right. You brought up a very good point, and I was going to say something, but I'm wrong. You're right. All you need over here is a kal shoe. So it doesn't matter if, the, if you have that open space. Okay. Says the Mishnabura, Yodzayin vafilu kashar, even if you tied a person. Umayri, and we're talking about over here, that you did not, that he doesn't know that he's standing over there for the purpose of being a lechi. That's why you need to tie him in place. If he doesn't know that he's serving as a lechi, he might leave. So now, how are you being simak on him? To be metalpal in the mavoi, he can leave at any time. He doesn't want to stand there all day. That's why you need to tie him in place. But if he knows that he's a lechi, you don't have to tie him in place. If he knows he's a lechi, he's not going to move. I'm a lechi. How can I leave? I have to stay here. Yeah, yeah. So once he knows, can you tie him? What? So, so that's where you have an interesting nafkamina between this halacha and the halacha of the people being a mechitza. By the people being a mechitza, we said, but dafka, they're not allowed to know that they're making a mechitza. We don't want them to know. Yes, once they find out, once they find out, you can still use them, you can't use them again. It, it would seem, yeah, not only that, this guy, you could tell him mitchila that you're making him a lechi, and then you don't have to tie him up, and you can leave him there. So, so to be a lechi, you could know. To be a mechitza, you cannot know. So they say the reason for this is very simple. One person cannot a mechitza make. Because a mechitza, you need more than one person. So to make a mechitza, you need a bunch of people. That's av shemilsa. Now it's very public. Now people know about it. And when we have problems of av shemilsa, that's when we're worried about zilzal Shabbos. When are we worried about Zilzal Shabbos? When, when it's public, when people know that you're doing something over here that seems to be circumventing a, a technicality in halacha, that's where we're worried about Zilzal Shabbos. But one person can make a lechi. So one person alone is not Afshemilsa. So he's allowed to know. What happens if you don't tell him? You only tell one person over there. No, you're, 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 you're right. You're not, you're, over there, you can't tell one person either. But, but the nature of the halacha over there is the nature of the beast is most of the time you need more than one person, more than one person, they're going to know. So the Chazal said they can't know. It's much more serious over there because yeah. you had the mechitza, you, you, you go to the Mechal and Shabbos. And over here? What? And over here? Over here now. Over here you do this as a, as a hacker, as a miser. Well, I'm saying, but that, that's... Because the main thing is already... No, already but that, that's going to depend on the Mechalik Zvishayim that we had in the beginning there. of the Simon. Over here, it might be Rishasarab. It might be Rishasarab and Daraisa over here. Where? If it's all, over here, <coughs> here too. If it's only three mechitzes, it could be Rishasarab and Daraisa. It's never Rishasarab You weren't here. Yeah. You weren't here at the beginning yesterday. No sure it is. The, we, the, I'm sorry. There's three mechitzes. Uh, no, that's the Bira Lacha we did yesterday. Maybe you weren't. Were you, did you come a little bit late? It says that. No, there's one sheet in Rishayim. The Rambam. You have the Rambam and the and the Rabbeinu Chananel. That three mechitzes is Rishasarab and Daraisa. <laughs> Anywhere. Anywhere. Three mechitz, which is the Ram the Raisa. Talk to the Rambam. Talk to the Rambam. <laughs> Talk to the Rambam. <laughs> Somebody once came, I think it was the Balam Mechaber of the Arach HaShulchan. Somebody once came to him for smicha. He was a child prodigy. It was like an 18 year old Ilui. And he came, they sent him to the Arach HaShulchan for smicha. So the Arach HaShulchan said, no. Zagapis to tell me a shtickle terror. So he told him a shtickle terror and he said a, a, a tremendous chiddish in a Rambam. Can I get all the other Rishayim? And he said a tremendous chiddish. So the Rambam yelled at him. He said, we, 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 we do you come off saying such a, such a tremendous chiddish? We can't say azazach. So this young whippersnapper looked at him and said, it's not me, it's the Rambam. <laughs> what do you want from me? I'm telling you it's a Rambam. So he looked at him and he said, look, 
if the Rambam would say such a thing, he says, you know, the Rambam gave me the Pirish Bishnayis La Rambam. The Rambam gave me the Yadach Hazaka. The Rambam gave me the Marin of Uchim. The Rambam gave me the Minyan Mitzvahs. He says, the Rambam gave me so much, if the Rambam would say what you're saying, I would tolerate it. But you? What have you done for me? Get out of here. <laughs> so it's the Rambam. You've got to take it up with the Rambam. Three Mechitzes is the Rishas Ram Daraisa. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. You're saying it's a marvel. Yeah, right. Yeah. What do you mean? So the guy's going to walk. So, so while he's not walking, it's a machiz. It's good. It's a, it's a lefty. And if he's going to walk, then I have no So, I, I mean, it was standing, standing here on one leg in the middle of Shin Samach Gimel, my impression is that the answer to that is yes. However, I'm biding my time because I know that the Mechaber later is going to speak about different cases where something was considered Mukaf Mechitzis by Ben and if it wasn't Ben Hashmashes, there are chilukim. So we'll, we'll see more, we'll speak more to that later. Okay. Zakt the... Uh, I'm losing my... Okay. So we did Oisir oh, Zayn. We're up to Sif Yodalad in the Mechaber. Okay. Im yesh tzas koisel beruach revi. The same way we said previously in Sif Beis. In Sif Beis we said the halach is, if the fourth side of this chatzar that's breached, is 10 amas wide or less. So he said, you need either a pastalid or you need a lechi on each side. And the Mechaber said, what if the wall did not fall down in its entirety and there's a four tefach section of the wall that remains standing? Uh, all the way at the side. So he said, no, not in the middle. No, it's, it's, it's bottle in the middle. No, it has to be all the way in the middle, all the way at the end. Well, not all the way at the end, but it has to be close to the end. We spoke about this yesterday, three tvachim or not, but it has to be at the end. So if a piece remains standing at the end, that is an effective pastalit. You don't have to put up a new pastalit. The remaining piece, four tevach piece of the wall is your pastalit. Or if you have a tiny bit of the wall remaining on each side, so those tiny little pieces of wall are your lechis. You don't have to go make a lechi. You have lechis. No, no, by the chutzer, you need two. Here we're talking about a mavi. Here you need one. Right now, I'm to, right. I'm saying the mechaber said in Sif Aleph that by a chotzer you could have the two remaining pieces could be your two lechis, or one remaining piece could be your pasdalit. Why can't it be in the middle? Let's we'll get we get to talk about that yet today. So the now the mechaber says same thing is true over here by a mavi. If you have a mavi, where you need to be masak in the fourth side, em yesh ktsas kaisel beruach revi. If a tiny little minute section of remaining wool is still standing at the opening of that lechi. So then, that's a lechi. But it has to be a tefach wide. Okay, let's take a look. Even though you did not make this section of wool for the purposes of a lechi, it just remained standing doesn't matter. It's effective anyway. Kaim alon, because we paskin, the lechi ha'oymen me'elav gan ken kosher. That a lechi that is made on its own is not a problem. It's effective. Okay, come on, besif yadal of ayin sham. Still a little bit uh, befuddled why the Mishtabrua sends me over here to sif yadal He sends me to sif yadal because that's where the Mechaber is going to talk about lechis that are ba me'elav. But I'm, I just find it interesting that he didn't send us back to Sif Aleph because we said the same thing in Sif Aleph. Or why in Sif Aleph he didn't send me to Sif Yod Aleph. It's not, it's not a kasha. I don't have a, a bomb kasha on the Chavetz Chaim. It's just interesting to me. I, I don't know if there's something between the lines over there or not. Eis cut in your test, the Chavetz Chaim says that this lechi, this lechi has to be reich of tefach. It has to be a tefach wide. Says the Chavetz Chaim, ayin bebir alacha. Take a look in the Bir Alacha. Why does it have to be a tefach wide? In Sif Gimel, we just said that your lechis could even be a mashu. They could be tiny. So now, why now suddenly, if you're relying on a remaining section of wall, does it have to be a tefach? So this goes back to something that I mentioned yesterday. Yesterday in Sif Aleph, we also, in Sif Bez, we also saw 
that the Mechaber said, if you have if you have a little bit, a little section of wall on each side by the opening of the chutzer, you don't need to erect a lechi. You could rely on those sections of wall as long as they're a tefach. But again, by the lechis, he said they don't have to be a tefach. So this is the sheet of the mechaber. You take a look in the bir alacha or the first bir alacha in sif dalid or bilvad sheyehay by roichav tefach. Says the chavetz chaim ha mechaber ozel l'shitasai. This is the Mechaber L'shitasai, the Pasuk Le'el, who said earlier in Sif Beis, Gam Le'inyin Chatzar, that the same halacha applies by a Chatzar, the Minishtayr Min Apirza, that if the entire wall on the fourth side did not fall down completely, but there's a little section on each side that's still there, Be'inon She'yehei Davka Pashel Tefach Mikan Mikan. That remaining piece on each side has to be a minimum of a Tefach thick. It can't be a mashahu, even though if you erect a lechi on each side, those lechis could be a mashahu. But if you're, if you're relying on a remaining piece of wall, it has to be a tefach. Davka pas shel tefach, mikan mikan. The chomer adover yoyser miyam osa pasen lechatchila, desagi b'mashahu. And relying on remaining sections of wall is more stringent than if you erect lechis. Olafizeh. So according to this, since the Mechaber over here and the Mechaber in Sif Beis are the Mechaber L'shitasai paskating the same way, or L'fizeh says the Chavetz Chaim, L'fi ma shehichranu l'eil l'dina mikama rishaynim. According to us, that I told you back in Sif Beis that we do not paskin like the Mechaber, and that when you're, remaining on, when you're relying on remaining pieces of wall, you also only need a mashu. The roi chomer nishtayer meyim also lechatchila, that the halacha of remaining pieces of wall is not more stringent than the halacha of lechis that you put up lechatchila. The sagi b'mashu, and it's also okay with the mashu, hu hadin be'inyaneinu le'inyan mavui. The halacha would be the same over here by a mavui, that you have an effective lechi, even if all you have remaining from the fourth wall of the Mavui is a tiny mashu at one side, that is going to be effective as your lechi, not like the Mechaber says, that it has to be a tefach. Yeah. I'm not sure what you're basing that distinction on. Because we don't want to make it close, close. The I mean, the, the, over there you need it, if it's a mashu, you need it from both sides. The the the, need, the one side wouldn't be enough. The distinction. No, but you need two sides. But the but distinction I, I hear, but the, the but thing. but the distinction that you're making is a machloikis in Erevin. Machloikis in the Gemara in Erevin, famous machloikis, is the lechi of a mavui. Is it mishum mechitza? Or is it Mishum Kaira? Or Mishum Heker? And so it's a machlaik is Amaram in Erevin. We paskin that it's Mishum Mechitza, that it's not Mishum Heker. <laughs> now, how, having said that, the Arach HaSholchan says that even though we paskin that the Lechi is Mishum Mechitza, it has aspects of Heker as well. But so far, it seems that that's Lechumra, not Lekula. <laughs> so. So that goes back to what the Mishnah Brewer said earlier, that, uh, that a Mavli is still more cow than a Chatzar. Because it's more public than a Chatzar. So you're right. It's more public than a Chatzar, so it's more cow. You only need one Lechi, but you still need a Lechi. <laughs> but you still need a Lechi. And that Lechi is still Mishnah Mechitza. All right, let's push a little bit further. Sif Hey in the Mechaber. Lechi, the Inoshiv Beziko Loi Motzikoi. A Lechi that cannot stand in a Ruach Metsuya. A lechi that would get blown down in the wind, loy chashiv lechi. That is not an effective lechi. Says the Mishnah Berurah is cut in chaf. Lechi di inoshiv. V'hu adin kisha oisid tzuras ha-pesach. Says the Chavetz Chaim, this is also true when you make a tzuras ha-pesach. A tzuras ha-pesach also has to be able to stand in the wind. The loy odif mi mechitza shein yichar l'lamad baruch matzuri shein ha-mechitza. A tzuras ha-pesach is no better than a real mechitza. 
A real mechitza has to be able to stand in a ruach metuya. A mechitza that can't stand in a normal wind is not a valid mechitza. So it says a pesach that can't stand in a normal wind is not a valid mechitza either. And a lechi that can't stand in a normal wind is also not a lechi. Va'afilu ain't a ruach ma'apilu la'aretz elamenidai. And even if the wind is not actually going to blow it down, just it's going to shake it back and forth, that's also a problem. Like we said earlier by the trees, if you remember, the case of the tree that makes a, a dome over you, we said you've got to tie down the branches, you've got to put in boards to make it firm, because we've been going with this klal that any mechitza that moves in the wind is not a mechitza. And I keep on bringing down the chazanish. The chazanish says that that's only a problem if it's moving more than three tvachim, so it's more than a shia lovud, or it's blowing apart so that there's going to be spaces so that you're going to lose your mechitza. But something that blows just a little bit is not really a problem. Now what's interesting to me over here is that the Chavetz Chaim, I'm not sure how to read the, the wording of the Chavetz Chaim here, the, the Mechaber said that the Lechi that we're talking about, which is the Lechi to be Mesak in the Mavoi, has to be able to stand in a Ruach Metsuya. Says the Chavetz Chaim, okay, you should know that this Halachi is also true by Yitzhuas HaPesach. Okay, then he says, and even if the wind is not going to knock it down, it's only going to shake it back and forth, that also is a problem. Is he talking about the Tzuras HaPesach? Is he also talking about our Lechi? So our Lechi that, that is going to get blown back and forth is also a problem? Well, I could see that being true because like I just told Yankel, we do paskin that the Lechi is Mishum Mechitza. So if the Lechi is Mishum Mechitza, so if the Halachi is that a Mechitza that gets blown in the wind is not a valid Mechitza, then I guess a Lechi that gets blown in the wind is not a valid Lechi. Oh, so the strings we said, you have to be very careful, you have, to, you have to pull them taut. If you don't pull the strings taut, you have a whole slew of problems. Chavetz Chaim said for sure that you, we have to be machmir on pulling those strings very taut. End of what? Which Siv Cotton? Yeah. No, no, no. Go down to the last three lines of Samarov. Mm-hmm. You have to pull it very taut. There's a machlek. It's a chreinim. But we paskin like that cheetah. Yeah. Okay. Ais katna chaf alef. Loi chashiv lechi. A lechi that blows in the wind is not an effective lechi. Nira li, says the Chavetz Chaim, it seems to me, the ima lechi lamata eno misnanea. If the bottom section of the lechi cannot blow in the wind, so let's say this lechi is fastened to the wall with nails at the bottom section, or it's tied very well to the wall, and therefore it does not move until a height of ten tefachim, and it only shakes back and forth above ten tefachim. Kasher. Then says the Chavetz Chaim, this would be a kasher alechi. The Dalma because forget about what's on top over the ten tefachim point. Nishar Gamkein Shalechi. So fine, the part that's blowing back and forth is not valid. We don't need the part that's blowing back and forth. We have the bottom ten tefachim. We don't care about the top. Yeah, but that's a lulav. A, 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 a lulav is, a, is one lulav. An esrig is one esrig. Right. No, but you have a mechitza on the bottom. Who cares? Have to be able to be shaken. I have a mechitza. <laughs> right. The point over here is I have a mechitza on the bottom. Let, let's say we had a wall that was ten tefachim tall. Right? And then it continues above ten tefachim. But above ten tefachim, it's, it's a lattice. And it's wide lattice. So there's no sheer love it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna invalidate the whole wall. I have a chitzit tefachim. Over here, he's saying it's very simple. Yeah. It depends where it is, like he said, because if the machabra says the words, the words, lechi, the chitzit tefachim, 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 the chitzit t
That's it, so it can't stand. Right. That means it's flimsy on the bottom. It's not standing. It's not moving a little bit on top. As long as it's got the tent, it's okay. He says, look, guy. Okay. It's not standing. It can't stand. You want to say he was medayik from there? Could be. Yeah, yeah that's where we're Okay. Zok de Vachaber Vaiter. Sivov. Tzarek shalo yehe alechi oh. So here, this was very interesting. The discussion came up yesterday, and Yankel alluded to it a couple of times already tonight. Let's again give the case of Sif Beis, where we have the Chatzar. So the Chatzar, it's got an opening of 10 amas or less on the fourth side. We said you could be masakin it with a pastalit. You put a board four tfachim wide on one side. And the Mishtabrura went out of his way in ice cut in Zion to tell me that where are you putting the pas dalid? Hainu Baroish Hakoisel. You're putting that pas dalid all the way on one side of the opening. And the Sharat in an ice cotton bays yesterday said, why does it have to be on one side? He said, well, it can't be in the middle, because if you put it in the middle, so then you take the Avir of the Haigisa and the Avir of the Haigisa, the air space, the open air space on each side of the Paz Dalit is going to be Mavatl the Paz Dalit. So the Paz Dalit isn't there. So we said, okay, so wait a second, using that logic, how about if you put the Paz Dalit 2.9 Tvachim away from the edge, from the corresponding wall? Well, then you have a Shilovud. You have a share of it, it's as if it's closed. So that pastalid would seem to, for sure, be effective. All right, how about if, the, if you put the pastalid 3.5 tfachim away from the wall? Well, you're not going to be able to say, Asi avir da haigisa, avir da haigisa, umavatale, because the airspace from the wall to the pastalid is only 3.5 tfachim. And the pas is 4 tfachim. And you only say avir da haigis avir da haigis mavatale if the open air space on each side is bigger than the pass. So it would have to be that you have more than four tvachim on this side, more than four tvachim on that side. Then you could be mavatal the pass dalit. But with three and a half on one side and more than four on the other side, you can't be mavatal the pass dalit. So my statement yesterday when this question came up was nearly it would seem to me based on what we covered until now, that if you put the pas dalid three and a half tvachim away from the wall, it should be fine. Okay, now let's see what a, this question turns out to be a machlaikis. And it's an interesting machlaikis. Says the machaber, we're not going to be able, hmm, we're just going to be able to touch on it, we'll have to continue. Says the machaber in Sivav, Tzarech shelo yehei halechi rachaik min akaisel shloisha tvachim. You want to be Masak in a Mavui with a Lechi? The Lechi cannot be more than three Tvachim away from the wall, at the, uh, from the corner at the opening. Says the Mishtabura, why? Ice cotton Chavbez. Yesh Aymrim, there are those that say, Shatam Mishum, what's the reason it can't be three Tvachim away? Da'asi Avir Da'agisu Da'agisu Mavatale. Because if you have a Lechi, more than three tvachim away from the wall. So now, the lechi is a mashahu. You have three tvachim on one side. You have a lot of open space on the other side. It's marat of the lechi. The lechi is not there. But if it's, less, if it's three tvachim or less, then we have no open air space on one side because of sheer lovud. Right? So up to three tvachim, you have no problem. More than three tvachim, you have a problem. Oh, ulfize. According to this, says the Mishtabura, if the lechi would be wider than three tvachim, kosher would be kosher. Even if the lechi is three tvachim away from the kaisel. Because what's the problem? So you're out of the sheer love. So you have three tvachim open. All right. You have three tvachim open. And then you have a lechi that's three and a half tvachim wide. So you can't say because the three tefach open ear is smaller than the three and a half tefach lechi. So according to this, says the Mishnah that case would be fine. And that's what I said yesterday. You can't say because Lovud makes that the closed area 
I'm sorry, forget love it. You added the shil love it. The, the fact that the lechi is three and a half tvachim, that's bigger than the three tvachim of open space next to it. So you cannot say al sevirum of atale. But v'yeshaimrim, but there are those that disagree with this. And they say that the reason the lechi cannot be three tvachim away from the wall is a nothing to do with us, Yavir Daigisim, Yavir Daigisim of Atale. It's a different din entirely. V'yesh, I'm, V'yesh, lost the place, I'm sorry, V'yesh, I'm, the Bechol Gavni Tzarek Liyais Alechi B'Saych Shleisha Tvachim L'Kaisel, that in any case, no matter how big your Lechi is, you cannot go three Tvachim away from the wall, V'yesh La'achmir. Now, the Mishnah Brewer does not tell me the reasoning for this. So, we don't have time now, Amir Sashem, I'll do it tomorrow. Now, 